Welcome to the channel, everyone, the Boosted Fam. All right, so a big subject right now, which, you know, I just figured the truck would be a perfect background drop for this. But as you can tell, I'm a diesel enthusiast. I love my diesel vehicles. I've been driving deals for uh, seven, eight years, something like that, somewhere in that ballpark. And I've had, you know, deleted vehicles. I've had everything. But now I'm getting the big scoop on this whole EPA regulation thing. And uh, just back, if you all haven't been with the channel, I used to have a 2017 Aluminum Duty Platinum. I had it fully deleted, had all that stuff done to it, running about 700 horsepower. I think it was 693 to the wheels. I've got a dyno video from back in the day on there. But uh, I have already once posted, you probably won't be able to see it, but busted by the EPA with my 2017 deleted truck. And nobody believed me. I posted this back April 4th of 2018, so a little over a year ago, a year and a few months ago. And everybody, if you look and read all the comments, you're full of it, you're full of it. Well, as you can tell, no, I wasn't full of it. So they really cracked down this past week on uh, all the diesel uh, world. Uh, PDI got a $1.1 million fine for deleting vehicles. Uh, Corey from PPEI, he has uh, officially stopped selling any deletes. And uh, the reason I'm putting this out, I've done quite a bit of research and I've talked to a lot of mechanics, which you know is getting all the underground information that hasn't quite surfaced yet. And then I've gone ahead and I've watched all the diesel channels that I watch and see what they've said to see uh, what research they have found. I found a couple holes in a few of their, uh, their videos, you know, the information they got, which is just probably where uh, a mechanic's not told them yet because mechanics are the ones that are really scared right now. So they're becoming ridiculous about what they're doing and uh, their regulations. But uh, uh, D-Max Rhino, uh, just work for it. Uh, he's probably the best research one I've seen yet. Uh, he found out one or two little things that I didn't realize, uh, but there's a hole or two in it, which is just because it, I could be wrong, but this is what mechanics have told me. All right, so uh, anything 07 and newer is what they're gonna regulate you on. Uh, because 06 and before, there wasn't a DPF that existed, it wasn't regulated. So what my guess is in the diesel community on YouTube, just so we don't get in trouble, you're gonna start seeing a lot of 06 and older vehicles. Um, if you notice, that's part of the reason why I'm building my 1972 power truck. Uh, there is no regulations for a 1972. It goes strictly off your VIN number. So let's say, and this is all facts that I've known for a long time, and uh, whenever I first put out that busted EPA video, uh, me getting busted, I had two uh, massive YouTubers I'm not gonna say any names, but they contact me like, hey, I know uh, this, this, and this, this is what you found. I was like, well, the EPA specifically came down on me and my mechanic. Uh, it, where we live in Tennessee, we didn't think any big deal of it. You're able to buy the products. So I said, screw it, I'll show, I'll show you a deleted 2017 Platinum. <laughs> and yep, they, they gave him a huge massive fine, so he stopped doing deletes. And then uh, they told me they were gonna take my truck from me and I still gotta get to make the payments. That's why you don't see a 2017 Platinum here right now. Because uh, it was literally a week after I got rid of my DPF system. Because I was afraid of maybe the EPA would say something. So just keep it. But then it was running deleted for two months before they said anything. Give or take. Or no, probably about a month. And then I finally got rid of it. I was like, ah, I don't need this. You know, there's been no issues on YouTube or anything, you know. And then literally a week after I sold the DPF system, they got me. <laughs> so there's some irony for you. But anyways, so we already know about this. This is why I'm building my 1972. This is why I, uh, I know of two specific YouTubers that are building older trucks now. That is uh, 06 or older. Actually, I think GM is 07 when they, like halfway through 07 is when they start putting DPS in, I, I believe. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong on that, I'm a poor guy. So, but, uh, so anything, o o let's go ahead and say 07 for the Chevy people and older, there's no regulation so the EPA won't do it. And this is where I found the hole in uh, D-Max Rhino. Uh, he's out in California, ridiculous regulations. I'm in Tennessee, no real regulations. Uh, but it is a federal law. That's where they'll get you. It doesn't really matter what state you're in because I'm not worried. Let's, I've got the DPF for this. <laughs> it's on the truck, uh, which most people don't realize that. But I just stopped doing exhaust videos so nobody has a clue what exhaust I'm running. But this one does have the DPF on it. Um, all it is, I put a tip on it to make it look like it wasn't a stock, just so it looked better. Uh, but out in California, he's saying that they will be able to pull you over for a, a random smog test, which 
that seems to be the thing right now, but then that's where I went a little deeper with asking the mechanics. And uh, he said, what's crazy is I just know him as D-Max Rhino. I, I watch his videos, but I don't actually know his first name. But um, he's saying that if they pull you over for it, supposedly it's voluntary. Uh, you don't have to consent to it, but there is no loophole to it. You're gonna consent no matter what, it is the federal government. Think about it this way. Technically speaking, if you get pulled over for a DUI, you don't have to do a breathalyzer. They can still take you in for it. You don't have to do a breathalyzer. That's the same concept. They're, they're going to get you. So uh, I know certain states are going to be more anti-delete, uh, like California. Like I believe that's where he lives. That's going to be a tough one for him saying that it just fell off in Mexico. Uh, or anybody out in California. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. I live in Tennessee. Do I believe the cops are going to be looking for deleted diesel trucks? They, uh, unless you're blowing smoke, they can't necessarily just pull you over hoping that you have a deleted truck to give you a ticket. They have to pull you over for something else, just like a DUI. Uh, they will try to pull you over for saying uh, you had a license plate light out and that you were, weren't doing the minimum speed limit, for example, just so they can pull you over and check you for drinking and driving. Same concept with your deletes. It's going to be the same thing. They're going to come up with some reason to get you pulled over and then check your truck or happen to want to check your truck whenever they pull you over. Uh, and what I'm getting from the mechanic side of it is this is going to be technically nationwide. Anyone can go ahead and pull you over for it basically and the ticket will be a misdemeanor. Now I know for a lot of these people that have these big lifted de deleted trucks or lower race deleted trucks and all this stuff, their jobs don't entail to where, you know, if they, excuse me, if they get a misdemeanor on the record, it doesn't really matter. I work for the government. So you will not see anything by any means 07 or newer uh, with deletes because I'm just a little little town country boy and I know the cops won't really worry about it around here. I don't expect them to. They could. I don't know. Uh, it's all up to them. They could be having a bad day and just say, I want to pull over every deleted truck on the road. <laughs> um, or they may never pull a single one over unless you blow a huge cloud of smoke, which I've never done that or anything. But um, I can't have a misdemeanor on my record working for the government. The next thing you know, they're going to start asking me questions. So uh, I do plan on getting a 2020 F-250 at some point in time, maybe 350, but it won't be deleted. It will just be basically a show truck that is running stock emissions. But that's where you can get into. PPEI has made some type of uh, agreements with the EPA. This is where a lot of people want to get back into it. Uh, I think his name's Gail Banks. I just know him as Banks Performance or whatever. Uh, he was originally the the pioneer of deleting vehicles and all this stuff years and years and years ago. And he was uh, he was so good at it. He actually ended up collaborating with the EPA later on and uh, started making good money through the government. It seems like because he incorporated them into what he's doing. And like, hey, he was smart enough to work to figure out how to crack all the codes. So he's like, hey, I want to. I'll team up with you, EPA, and I'll show you how you're able to crack all your codes and this and that. And then now Corey from PPEI, he's the new version of Gil Banks uh, with all this stuff. And granted, the guy has been in and out of court, it seems like every week for the past year or more, trying to fight the EPA on these deletes and everything. So power to him, he was really holding out for us as long as he could. And uh, some people are disgruntled that it seems like he playing the devil's advocate, he went with the EPA uh, because there is some agreements between them. Uh, he's going to show them how he can pass emission standards with tuning trucks that have the systems on there. You know, and supposedly these systems are gonna be great and awesome, uh, better fuel mileage, better power, all this other stuff. And some people feel like, you know, he kinda went against the diesel community when he is a diesel enthusiast. But at the same point in time, he is still made it to where you knew the EPA was gonna crack down. I called it almost a year and a half ago, uh, and everybody said I was full of it. And here it is a year and a half later, I was 100% correct, uh, because they already came after me once, and my mechanic. Uh, so with that, you can also thank him, though, because he's involved the EPA to show them where he's got to know how to tune them with those systems on there. So it actually works out perfect to where, you know, it cuts down on the smog and all that other stuff, which I don't agree with, because whenever your truck regens, 
all that black smoke that it was keeping from going in the environment, it just pushes it right out into the environment all at once instead of over a period of time. So let's say it regens at 10,000 miles, then it puts up 10,000 miles worth of black smoke. So I, I really don't understand the whole concept of it anyways. Um, there are other videos on YouTube that explains DPF down to a science. I've not cared to watch it. I just knew the EPA was cracking down on it, so it's gotta go. Uh, or the straight pipes have to go. So anyways, Corey, he at least made it to where the EPA is still going to be a, allowing tuning to all diesel trucks or whatever. But uh, like the new uh, power stroke, when it comes out, I'm not sure if it's going to be the fourth gen power stroke because they're already on their third version, which, you know, all their changes, you know, the turbo, this or that, you know, nothing major changes for it. But will that truck ever be deletable or not deletable, but even tunable? Because if there's not a huge industry that they can try to sell delete kits for, you know, this brand new version of the Power Stroke, it's still 6, 7, but it's going to be a new generation, I believe. Uh, is anybody going to take the time and effort to even figure out how to tune it? So luckily, the new GM engine, they, the undeletable engine, is now tunable, deletable, and all that stuff. So there at least will be tunes out there for, uh, for, uh, uh, well, there's a blooper, but, uh, there would be tunes out there for that engine and everything. So people can still go ahead and still go by 2020 and they can still go ahead and tune it. And supposedly Corey's saying, which I mean, if he's gonna put this much effort into it, he will probably be one of the huge mass of people still being able to make some type of profit without shutting their doors on it. All right, so with the tuning and everything uh, with PPEI, uh, I don't know if GDPs even still exist because I know they had tunes. Uh, that's what was on my 2017. Uh, they had tunes for vehicles with the emission systems on there. So I'm not sure if they're still in the game or not. I haven't heard anything about them in a long time, so it kind of makes me question it. But uh, Easy Link. Easy Link is a system everybody wants to use. I almost put it on this. Uh, I did have it on my 2017. But Easy Link is a system everybody wants to use. So this is what baffles me. <clears throat> because you know iPhone, for instance. Uh, the one, at one point in time, the federal government wanted to be able to get into their system and see everybody's stuff, and uh, Apple said, no, get out of here, you ain't doing that, that's their privacy rights. Well, EasyLink right now, at this current point, is at the same stage. All these tunes and everything are in a cloud, just like your iPhone, your Android system, there's a cloud. And <clears throat> the government is trying to do a court order to make them give up the cloud. And then they will have all the truck's VIN numbers. This is the crazy part that a lot of people don't realize yet. This is where I've not seen a single video on this yet. They will be able to get all those truck's VIN numbers, uh, be giving nice little uh, letters in the mail, letters in the mail to everyone about this stuff. So <clears throat> I believe you put the DPS system back on the truck that I originally sold or whatever. Uh, because I was able to find a system for it. He got the system, so I'm pretty sure he put it back on there, so you know, he'd be in the clear. But let's say uh, you bought your truck from Joe Smo, and it was deleted, and it's something that's 07 or newer, and you're using EasyLink. They will find out that you were the owner of that truck, and you were running the tunes that say you have no EPA regulations emission systems. So then next thing you know, you're gonna let it in the mail saying that you were going to get a fine for having that truck, even though you didn't delete it. Doesn't matter if you delete it or not. You own the truck, you were driving it. Um, the court order has not gone through. And will it go through? I don't know. It depends if EasyLink wants to fight it as hard as Apple did. Now, Apple is a multi-billion dollar corporation. EasyLink is not. So I don't know how long EasyLink could hold off on this and all their stuff. But they do have technically a cloud that has everyone's information that runs the EasyLink system. And uh, I have no idea where this is gonna end up. If any of you all know anything about this better than I do, please put the information down below or a link or something to where you know everybody watching this video, which I'll probably get 5,000 views versus people that are getting 600,000 views. But if you know anything more about it, because I'm trying to get down to nitty gritty, because I do want a 2020 Super Duty when it comes out. I, I, I would like to have one. Uh, but, and I was really hoping, I was like, hey, maybe I can get a delete on it before, you know, the EPA eventually cracks down. Because it did take them a long time to really crack down. Uh, um, I hadn't looked into it too much, but I know Trump at the time was really telling them to calm down because the EPA was trying to make the regulations so hard, 
even on gas vehicles to where it was going to shut down motor companies because they just got to put too much R&D into the development of the systems to pass the EPA regulations. So I know originally Trump put a stop to that, but now, you know, eventually it's going to come down the pipeline and it has. But then that's where uh, I love where DMAX Rhino did this, and this is 100% true. Do your research on this. I've done the research on it. It's been a long time, so I'm a little rusty on it. Uh, but they're pushing electric vehicles, electric, electric, electric vehicles. Those lithium batteries to mine for that stuff, to produce it, the factories to create them and everything, for basically the equivalence of one electric vehicle to save the environment compared to what it was to produce everything to make that vehicle, it would almost take 10 years of driving that vehicle to catch up on how much a diesel truck puts out. So, I mean, how many people do you know that keep their electric vehicles 10 years? And like Tesla is one of the major ones right now that a lot of people are going for because they're the innovators of, you know, the awesome, fast electric cars and all that stuff. People that are able to afford that vehicle, do you think they're going to keep it for 10 years? No. So actually they are polluting the environment a whole lot worse to create these vehicles than they are saving the environment. To a certain extent, there are some people out there that can keep it for 10 plus years and it can make a true difference. Uh, but that's, you know, a double-edged sword on that. So do a little research on, you know, that. And then the EPA is not regulating those manufacturers that are creating that. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll slack on your regulations because you're creating something that won't produce pollution. So that, that, that's the crazy one. Go, go do a little research on that one. But anyways, back to the show the hand. I think the whole diesel community will be buying roughly 06, 07 vehicles and older now to build them, just like my 1972. It has a 6.0 in it, which still didn't come with DPF. All it came with was the EGR cooler, and uh, my 6.0 still has the EGR on it. Still has it on there. But, uh, yeah, it, you're, it's going to be an underground world. You can probably still find a way to delete all your vehicles. That's my guess. You know, there's always someone that's it's someone out in the middle of nowhere doing it in their garage uh, or their shed even. They know, puts in the time to develop it to where they know, hey, uh, Bring it here, I can delete it. Just don't tell me when you got it from here and you gotta pay me cash so that there's no records of me doing it. That, I still feel like that will happen. And, uh, but for me, working for the government, I don't want misdemeanor on my record. So even if I do buy a brand new truck, I'll, I'll do the emissions tunes. Uh, I think that'll still be fine. The only crappy part is if you do tunes with the emissions on there, it will regen more. Uh, unless Corey found some loophole because apparently he is an absolute genius when it comes to to breaking the codes and doing the computer work side of it. That's why he's able to be as successful as he is. Smart businessman and apparently a genius when it comes to a computer. So maybe he'd make it to where it regens the same amount, but you still got your tunes. Uh, I'm not sure on that one. But I would love to have a 2020 uh, Ford Super Duty with tunes on the missions and just see what it's like. Just see if you know the power is there, if the response is there, is a the fuel economy there like he says there's gonna be. Uh, so if they even decide to do it for the 2020 Ford, I don't think they will. But I'm a Ford guy and I stay true to my Fords pretty well. Uh, so anyways, but with that note, I will be, I know I'm rambling on guys, but I'm trying to get all this stuff in for you all uh, and come up with and try to remember every little thing because I've done quite a bit of research on it. But with me, you'll see my 72 Platinum, or Platinum, <laughs> not a 72 Platinum. Uh, I was thinking about turning it into a 72 Platinum, see how nice and luxurious I could make it. Uh, but heck, that's going to take five years of extra money, probably. But uh, my 72 power choke, you know, 6.0 and everything. And then, right now, I'm looking at OBS. You know, it's uh, that red one that I showed you. I'm really, really hardcore looking into it. And I'm hoping the next video, too, uh, we might see that one enter the channel. And that would be perfect. You know, I'm probably going to sell this guy. Yes, it's got, you know, all the emissions and everything. I'm probably going to sell it, though, just because I literally am legally not allowed to do anything to it now. Uh, I can change the wheel tire setup, lift it, which it is getting lifted up. See how long I keep it lifted uh, before I'm most likely selling it. Uh, because all I can literally do is swip, swap out wheels and tires and lift. That, that's all I can do from now on. Uh, so I like to do something that you know you can do a whole lot more to, some performance this, performance that. But uh, that 7.3, it's already got injectors. Uh, he put some big boy tunes on it and stuff. So I'm kind of looking forward to that, and it's a rare truck. So I might go scoop that truck up in the next video or two. Uh, oh man, holy crap, I'm at 20 minutes. Yeah, 
let's go ahead and cut this video. But if anybody has any more information on this, you know, EPA regulations that I have not covered, please put something down in the uh, comments down below so that people can look more into it and I'll give updates as I figure them out. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to enjoy this video because it's a lot of crappy news for the diesel community. But I hope you all did. Please give it a big thumbs up. Stop by for the first time. Please subscribe. You all have a great day.